Question number nine, Sue Moroney. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Social Development. How many children were in households affected by the 15,079 sanctions against people receiving benefits with dependent children since her welfare reforms were introduced on the 15th of July 2013? Mr. Speaker. Honourable Paula uh, Mr. Speaker, the number the member refers to is the number of sanctions applied, not the number of beneficiaries. This is because beneficiaries can have sanctions applied to them more than once. We know there is at least one child living in each of these households, but the total number of children per household is not centrally collated. It is held in individual case files and could not be compiled in time to answer this question. However, what we do know is that people often quickly recomply. So the number of sanctions in place at any one time is much lower. For example, at the end of June 2014, there were 575 households with children being sanctioned. This does not necessarily mean they... Oh, sorry, I apologise. Point of order, Sue Oh, My point of order may be obsolete now, Mr Speaker, but the member said she didn't know um, the answer to my question, and I failed order. to order. see why she continued on. Order. order, I accept the member answer that they... They, they couldn't answer it exactly because they hadn't. Uh, it's a massive job to collate the information. But would have expected uh, the member to appreciate that the minister was attempting to give quite relevant information, which certainly was of interest to me, if not to the member herself. I'd be grateful if we could hear the answer. Has the minister now completed That's the fine. Supplementary. supplementary question, Sue Maroney. Well, why doesn't the minister of social development? want to know how many children are affected by her policy to halve the appearance income, uh, to halve the appearance benefit, reducing the household income by $150 per week. Uh, Mr Paula Speaker, well, as I was trying to tell her, is at a point in time. So what we do know is that actually before, when a sanction is applied, it does not necessarily mean that they lose money out of their benefit. Most actually recomply. No, it doesn't actually. What it means is most actually recomply in a relatively short period of time, and it does not actually affect their benefit payment. Supplementary question, Sue Maroney. Does she realise that cutting the household income by $149 a week means that children go hungry, doctors' visits are cancelled, prescriptions are not picked up, power is cut off because the bill can't be paid, and families get behind in their rent payments? And is this the brighter future she promised? Mr Speaker. Honourable Paula Actually, Mr Speaker, the brighter future we promised is 30,000 fewer kids on welfare now than there were two years ago. What we promised is the lowest number of sole parents on benefit that we have seen for nearly 20 years. Before any sanction is applied, a person is told that they have failed their obligation and are given five days to recomply. If they recomply in that period, they will not be sanctioned. Then if they don't, they, they can, the uh, sanction then applies, but if they can recomply between that and their benefit payment being made a week later, then it does not affect their actual benefit. Actually, it's very fair and reasonable to expect people to turn up for their appointments and to actually be looking for work if that is the expectation. Income. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Sue Maroney. Well, what is her explanation then for the fact that in the latest household income report, we now have the highest proportion of children in se severe poverty this century. Mr Speaker, Honourable Paula Bennett. it is about helping those people into work and seeing their incomes increase. And as I have stated, we have fewer sole parents on benefit now than we have had for over 20 years. That substantially makes a difference to them, their children and their community. And we will back them into work because, quite frankly, the hand-wringing sympathy of the Labour Party doesn't work for them. Point of order. Point of order, Sue Maroney. Mr Speaker, my question was very clear. I was asking her for an explanation for the fact that in the latest household income report we've now got the highest proportion Order. of children in severe poverty. Uh, and the the minister minister's answer was um, denying that fact. No, the minister answered by saying that her explanation was helping people into work. <laughs> Further supplementary? <laughs> uh, supplementary question. Supplementary question, Sue Maroney. Uh, well, <laughs> if she's going to deny that, <laughs> then has she asked for any advice or reports about the plight of the 5,822 people who have had their entire benefits stopped under her welfare reforms in the year ended June 2014, and whether that has contributed to the increased homelessness, the increased begging, 
and the more poverty we see on the streets of New Zealand. Mr Speaker, well no, because actually we haven't changed the eligibility to benefits. So actually those people are eligible for benefits if they meet a criteria where they don't have a job or don't have an income. And the reality is that they, we, we don't know what the reasons are for them leaving their benefit. And they are many and they are varied. Question number 10, Shane Arden. Thank you Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister.